Welcome to the PRINCE2 Practitioner Mock Examination. We hope by now that you've already taken your mock exam. We went through the mock exam for the first paper in our PRINCE2 Practitioner course. This is the rationale for the mock exam paper 2. We will highly advise that by the time you get to this point, you've already done the mock paper 1 and mock paper 2 and you're here to review why the answer is what the answer is. We hope that this session will lead to an enhancement of knowledge and will provide you with the confidence to go further and actually do your real exam. Without further ado, let's proceed. As a reminder, let's go through the specification of the practitioner course. This is still an open book exam. You are allowed to take in your official Prince 2 7th edition manual. This could be in a soft copy or hard copy. The exam is going to be 150 minutes long and you'll have 70 questions to answer so roughly you have about 2 minutes per question. You need 60% to pass it which is 42 out of 70. And of course this is a multiple choice and matching question. There are nothing to write in there although for convenience you might have blank pieces of paper with you when you do the exam. Before you begin your exam, it is a good idea to always read the project scenario. We will recommend that you spend about 10 minutes reading the project scenario, trying to highlight things that are important, read the number of stages in there, and the deliverable for each stages. However, at this point, do not read the additional information. When you get to the question that requires the additional information, it would ask you to go and read it. It will basically say, using the additional information, answer the following question. But at the start of, do not spend your time reading the additional information. Once you're finished with the project scenario, please proceed to the question. Now BU. Now BU is a not-for-profit organization that works with local communities to eliminate discrimination of any kind and help advance the international human rights system through local and targeted intervention. Now BU forms chair and equip networking support groups where anyone who experienced discrimination can share their experience and thought in a safe and empowering space. Additionally, now BU is one of the few non-governmental organizations in the country that works directly with police forces to co-develop campaign and encourage the reporting of discriminatory incidents to authorities. Recent research has shown that discrimination against marginalized groups, particularly the homeless and refugees, is growing at a concerning rate. The increase in discrimination has led to now be you to believe that a new six-month campaign is required to address this issue. They have decided to run the campaign as a project aiming to both raise awareness of this type of discrimination and reinforce their own brand recognition. The project management maturity of the organization is very low, with no standardized process or template in place. For that reason, now be you has contacted a professional project manager with a track record of successfully delivering in a not-for-profit sector who will be responsible for the following. Developing the initial project management documentation. Advising and coaching the now BU Director of Campaign who is sponsoring this project. Mentoring the staff members who will be appointed as project manager. Advise the project team how to use a variety of media, TV, press, social network for this and other future projects. This is a high level view of the project, but this is to be confirmed as pre-project discussion are still occurring. Stage one, initiation. Business case, project initiation documentation. Stage two, campaign high level requirement gathering, option analysis. Stage three, implementation of the chosen option and closure. The main output from this project will be a delivered multi-channel campaign. At this point, we've come to our additional information. In the additional information, you'll have all the roles that could potentially be present in this project. Think of it as these are my stakeholders for now. However, do not venture into reading all of them at this present. Leave the additional information and then proceed to the question. When you get to the question that requires you to use the additional information, it will ask you that using the additional information, answer the following questions. That is when you come back to this page and you read the additional information as necessary. So let us proceed to the questions. Question number one. 
The campaign project will be delivered across the country and options to deliver the campaigns are being considered in stage two. Discrimination against marginalized groups varies by region and is higher in dense urban areas. For this reason, the expected increase in the number of incidents reported to authorities has been set with a range of between 5 and 15 per month, depending on the region. Which principle is being applied and why? We have management by exception and we have ensured continued business justification. When you're dealing with this type of question, the first thing you want to determine is where does it fit? Do I think this is management by exception or do I think this has something to do with continued business justification? Once you have decided on the one that is true, ignore the other one and focus on the one that you think is true. Be mindful when you're considering it because both potential answer could be correct. However, one could just be a statement of fact while the other one is answering the question. Because the question tells us that they have provided a range between 5 and 15 per month, this is to do with tolerances. And, of course, the, ones, the principle that deals with tolerance is managed by exception. So we can just ignore the continued business justification. But which management by exception is it? Let's have a look at A. A said manage by exception because some area might under deliver and some might over deliver on the benefit. B says manage by exception because scope tolerance should be set to allow flexibility in relation to what is delivered. Now this is not about the scope itself. This is A manage by exception because some area might under deliver and some might over deliver. As to say basically this type of discrimination is higher in urban area and so the urban area might have more than the others. So the one answering the question here is A. Remember, the point of the practitioner is to answer the question, not just to state facts. So A will be your correct answer. Question number two. The requirements have been finalized during stage two. During the option analysis, the police liaison officer raised a request for change to include an online training application on how police officers should respond to incidents. They believe this will lead to better handling and increased reporting of the incident. The project manager consulted the head of publicity and social media who agree with this assessment. The project manager also obtained cost estimate to deliver the application from several IT suppliers. As a result, the project executive considered the risk and decided to approve the use of the change budget to fund this. How well does this apply to ensure continued business justification principles? A says it applies well because the benefit from the application needs to be balanced against the cost and risk of additional investment to be justified. B says it applies well because in project driven by new obligation, the chosen option needs to represent the best value for money. C says it applies poorly because using the change budget, the project budget should be enough to fund additional costs to the application. D says it applies poorly because the benefits that were used to justify the funding of the application will be measured after the project has been completed. Let's break down the question. The requirement has been finalized in stage two, so it has been baseline. During the option analysis, the police liaison officer raised a request for change to include an online training application on how the police officer should respond to incidents. We know that a request for change is a change to the baseline, and requests for change are always funded by the change budget if approved. If we have to fund every request for change using our project budget, we would lose a lot of money. They then said they believe this will lead to better handling and increased reporting of incidents. The project manager consulted head of publicity and social media who agrees with this assessment. So during this request for change, the project manager would have needed to go through the issue management technique. 
to decide whether or not they want to implement this change. The project manager also obtained cost estimate to deliver this application from several IT suppliers. And by going through the issue management technique, you'd have gone through the whole assess, where you need to consider the impact on the project objective and the business case. As a result, the project executive considered the risk and decided to approve the use of the change budget to fund this. We will only approve the use of the change budgets when we get to implement. So we've come to the final aspect of our issue and change management technique. And we've decided that this change that has just been raised, which is a request for change, is approved. And therefore, we're going to need to use our change project to implement it. How well does this apply to the ensure continued business justification and why? A says it applies well because the benefit of the application needs to be balanced against the costs and risk for the additional investment to be justified. Yes, that is correct, because by going through the issue management technique, we would have captured the issue that was raised, we would have need to assess it, we would have need to recommend potential options, then we would have need to make a decision and then implement that option. So A is correct. So this is not just about good value for money, it's about going through the process. Question number three. The head of publicity and social media has been appointed as a senior user on the project. They have been appointed as an external media consultant to provide the user project assurance on their behalf. The media consultant will also advise the, the timing and content of various advertisements. The project manager has prepared role description for the media consultant. Is this an appropriate application of the defined roles and responsibilities and relationship principles and why? Is when it comes to define roles, responsibility, and relationship, this is linked very strongly with the organizing practice. The idea is we want to make sure that every role in there has their role description, they know precisely what they need to do and how they need to perform their role. If we're going to appoint a project assurance, it is appropriate for the project manager to write a role description for that person so that they know the remit of their power. So therefore, the answer is yes. C says yes, because the responsibility of the media consultant should be clearly defined. And that's where we're going to go. C is the right answer. D says yes, because user interest should be represented as a primary stakeholder on the project board. D is not incorrect in terms of theoretically. Yes, user interests are always represented as a primary stakeholder on the project board because we have senior user. But the question is not asking us about senior user, it's asking whether or not it is appropriate for us to give a project assurance their role description. Therefore, why D is correct in its own way, it doesn't answer the question. C, answer the question because it focuses on what we're trying to achieve. So, yes, because the responsibility of the media consultant should be clearly defined. Question number four. The project is in the starting of a project process. The director of campaign is keen to understand more about the project. As a result, they have arranged a series of workshops with the appropriate networking and support group to review the experience of previous campaign. Which principle is being applied and why? Before we go through the answer, let us consider what has happened here. We're in starting up a project process and the director of campaign is keen to understand more about the project. So as a result, we have now gathered people for a workshop and we're going to review experience from previous campaign. It sounds like we're learning from experience. So we can say learn from experience clearly and we can disregard defined role and responsibilities. But which learn from experience is it? Learn from experience because the project team should learn from mistake on previous project to improve the management of this project. 
that is C. D says, learn from experience because the project manager should take into account that workshop attendees are likely to have different learning needs and preferences. Well, that's something the project manager should take into account, but that doesn't answer the question. We've gathered here because we want to learn from previous experience, using our previous campaign. So C is our correct answer. C says, learn from experience because the project team should learn from mistakes on previous projects to improve the management of this one. So C is our correct answer. Question number five. The project is at the end of stage one. The project executive has asked for formal presentation of the project initiation documentation by the project manager. After that, they will review the stage two plan before authorizing the work to start on the requirements gathering of the option analysis. Which principle is being applied and why? Let's break it down. We know that we've reached the end of stage one, so we're at a stage boundary now. The project executive has asked for a formal presentation of the project initiation documentation by the project manager. Basically, I want to know what is in the page. Come and explain it to me. After that, they said they will review the stage plan before authorizing the work. Then I will look at the stage plan for the next stage. Which principle is that? The principle that's been applied there is manage by stages. Because it's the idea of a stage boundary until the project executive is satisfied with the work that is done in that stage, we cannot go to the next one. But which one is it? C says manage by stages because the project executive should ensure that the project has been properly initiated before stage two starts. And D says manage by stages because the project manager should be authorized to make necessary adjustments if the stage remains within tolerance. Ha, huh. no, not D. C says, manage by stages because the project executive should ensure that the project has been properly initiated before the stage starts. Yes, they need to be accountable for this. They need to look at the paid. They need to make sure everything is there and that they agree with all the approaches and the way this project is gonna be run. So C is our correct answer. Question six. Stage one has been approved. The head of fundraising has suggested that representatives from Network Support Group participate in quality review of all media messages. This quality review has been specified in the product description to ensure that the messages are checked adequately. Which principle is being applied and why? So, we've already agreed that this is focus on product. But which focus on product is it? A says focus on product because the project team should understand how the quality will be checked to ensure that it meets the campaign's objectives. And of course, B says focus on product because the project team should agree what is to be delivered in the product description to prevent unnecessary work. If we're talking about quality review, we're trying to make sure that what it is that I get is precisely what I want. We've already passed the point where we describe the product itself. So our answer will be A. So focus on product because the project team should understand how the quality will be checked to ensure that it meets its campaign. We already have the product, we just need to make sure that everything is detailed in there. So A is our answer. Question number seven. The Campaign Against Discrimination project is a short, simple project using an external marketing agency. The project board and the newly appointed project manager are both inexperienced at running projects. As a result, the project board asks for weekly virtual briefing from the project manager for the stage two, which is seen as the most critical stage. This will replace more formal ILI report and will be reviewed again before stage three starts. Which principle is being applied and why?
We have two possible options. We have tailored to suit and we have defined roles and responsibility. This is basically tailoring. The project board has realized that because they don't quite know how well the project manager is going to manage this thing, they've decided, okay, we're going to set at the highlight report very, very short at the moment. That way, as the project progresses, we will know whether or not we need to extend it. But this means that we can keep a closer eye on the project. Once we've decided that this is tailored to suit, now let's look at which tailored to suit it is. Tailor to suit the project because the project control should be adapted to suit the project size, complexity, and team capability. B says tailor to suit the project because the project should be tailored to suit the standards used by the marketing agency. It is not about the marketing agency. The reason why we've decided to make this change is because of the team capability being unknown and because of the complexity of that stage being very high. So therefore, the right answer is A. Question number seven concludes all the questions when it comes to principles. At this point, you're now moving into the people aspect of the project. Question eight. The project is in the initiating project process and the project team has been appointed. The team members have not worked together on a project before and most people work from home at least two days a week. To help everyone to get to know each other, the project manager has organized a weekly launch event for the people to interact and communicate informally. This launch event will be held in the off ed office building on a day when most people are in the office anyway. Is this an appropriate application of leading successful team according to the people element and why? The answer for this is yes, of course. The project manager has decided like, look, I want to get people together. I want to get them to, get to know each other so that it can improve their collaboration. But which yes is it? Yes, because the project manager should use the launch event to obtain information on the status of the work package and resolve any issue. B says yes, because the launch event should help build social cohesion and make the most of the team members time so they can work effectively on the campaign. It will be a very terrible project manager if he did A and during the launch event he was bothering people with work. The idea is to get people to know each other, to basically become more comfortable around each other. So the answer is B. Yes, because the launch event should help build social cohesion, making the most of the team members time so that it can work effectively. Question number nine. One of the graduate trainee was appointed as a project manager at the end of stage one. At the beginning of stage three, the project manager invited the head of publicity and social media to the meeting to agree a work package to implement the chosen option. The head of the publicity and social media is more senior than the project manager. As a result, the project manager asked the project executive to attend the meeting to use their authority to authorize work package to the head of publicity and social media. Is this an appropriate application of leading successful team according to the people element and why? Of course this is not. You have not hired a project manager so that it can be bundling you before it could authorize work package. One of the key responsibility of the project manager is to authorize work packages. He has been granted the authority to do so. So if he still needs to drag the executive over there to hold his hand, you do not have the right project manager. So the answer is no. Which no is it? No, because the project manager should co-create the work package with the head of publicity and social media to build relationship despite difference in seniority. This is where things such as co-creation can work. Acknowledging the seniority of the person there, take advantage of their understanding, their knowledge and their professionalism. Work together. So C will be our correct answer. D says no because the project should manage by exception 
to reduce the time burden on the project executive by removing unnecessary meeting. Yeah, technically, yes, you want to remove unnecessary meeting, but basically co-creation will work in this particular situation. So C answers the question directly because it acknowledges the seniority of the person you're working with and gives you a way in which you can manage them. So co-creation, best option here, C. Question number 10. The Charities Act provides legislation that now be you asked to comply with. At a regular meeting with a project executive, the project manager is advised that the project executive is unhappy with the way that the Campaign Against Discrimination project is complying with this legislation. The project executive believes that the project should be more ethical and transparent in the way they declare to donors how their donated money is being spent. The project manager has added this to the issue register. Is this an appropriate way of leading successful change according to the people element and why? The answer is yes. During the project, the board has the right to give ad hoc advice. There's also other regular meetings that can take place. And what the board has stated is an issue. So this is something that the PM has in comply with to their satisfaction. To write in the issue register allows the PM to be able to treat this formally. So is it A or B? A says, Yes, because the project manager should assess the impact of the project's executive concern now that it has been added to the issue register. B says, yes, because regular meeting with the project executive should allow the project manager to receive an act on feedback about the legal commitment. The answer is B. So this will allow this regular meeting is useful for him to gather new information. Question 11. The project is at the end of the initiating a project process and the project manager is trying to arrange regular team meetings at the head office throughout the stage two. The purpose of the meeting is to involve staff from across the project ecosystem and build relationship with them. Some staff members have never met in person, although they will need to work closely with each other across the project ecosystem when gathering requirements and analyzing options. The project manager is finding it difficult to agree a day and has decided to rely on the team members to plan meetings with each other as required. Is this an appropriate way of leading successful change according to the people element? The answer is no. This looks like an abdication of responsibility. The PM should resolve this problem. Let's look at the no. It said, C says no because the project manager should ensure that the team members have time to build supportive relationship across the project ecosystem. D says no because the project manager should hold regular meeting to ensure that the team members clearly understand their roles and responsibility. It's not that the team members don't understand their roles and responsibility. What we're trying to do is to build cohesiveness within the team. So D is not our answer. Our answer is C. No, because the project manager should ensure that the team members have time to build supportive relationship across the project ecosystem. Question number 12. The project is reaching the end of stage two. There have been significant debates during the option analysis. It has been difficult to get agreement on which option to recommend for implementation in stage three. The police liaison officer was particularly unhappy with some of the suggested messaging to the police forces. How should the project manager undertake communication to deal with concerns of the police liaison officer? Let's have a look at it. A says minimize communication with police liaison officer as his ongoing resistance to the suggested option is likely to reduce the team morale. This seems like a very bad idea. Somebody is unhappy, 
you want to ignore them or marginalize them, which will go against even the purpose of the project. So A is incorrect. B says, run a focus group with the key stakeholders across the organizational ecosystem to review the messaging and advise the police liaison officer of the change identified. Well, why are we going into the organizational ecosystem at the moment? Because what the police liaison has a problem with is happening within the project ecosystem. C, focus on communication with the police liaison officer to find out if there are any misconception or other reason for his resistance. This will be the best approach to take in this circumstance, because that way you can try to understand why the police is feeling this particular way and what you can do to help. So C will be a valid answer. Question 13. The project management maturity of the organization is low and the contractor project manager is working on improving how now BU manages its project. As our work laptops are installed with virtual meeting technology, it was agreed that this should be used for the regular progress update meeting. This information has been communicated to other people involved in the project across the business. Under which heading of the communication management approach should this information be recorded? Now, it's not stakeholder analysis because we've chosen an object to use. It's not resource, it's not the schedule of the communication, it's one of our supporting tools and techniques. So we've decided to use this virtual meeting technology as a tool to facilitate our communication. So therefore, the answer is C. This marks the end of our people elements. And from here on, we're gonna make our way into the business case theme. Business case. Here are three items of information that should be recorded in the business case for the Campaign Against Discrimination Project. Under which heading, A to E, should they be recorded? Choose only one heading. Each heading can be used once, more than once, or not at all. Before we go through the question, you'll see the headings to your right are the headings that you find in your business case. Let me first define those headings that we see there. Reason is basically you stating all the reasons why this project is necessary. B, business options. There's always at least two options. The main option that we're exploring in our business case and the idea of do nothing. The expected benefit is always measurable. And then the sustainability target is the target that we're aiming in terms of our environmental target. Then we have our costs, which is the cost of the project or how we got the money and the cost of the product maintenance. Now that you have a grasp of those uh, headings, let's have a look at the question. Question 14 says, now BU works with several networking and support groups that support anyone who has experienced discrimination. These groups have expressed concern about the increase in the number of, re of reports of discrimination against marginalized groups. Under what heading would we put this? This is reason. This is one of the justification why we started the project. So A will be our right answer. Question 15. There will be a 20% increase in the number of incidents of discrimination being prosecuted due to the police force's increased awareness of the nature of discrimination against marginalized group. Here we have something measurable. As a result of what we are doing, we know there will be 20% increase in prosecutions by the police based on discrimination. This is measurable increase. So therefore, this will be in our expected benefits. Question 16. The project needs to engage effectively with its existing donors and financial aid partners in order to secure the budget for this project. Here, because we're talking about budget, this will be in the costs section. So our answer will be E. Let's have a look at question 17. 
The project is in the initiation stage and the contractor project manager is discussing the benefits with the director of campaigns. From their experience, the director has advised that the benefit of increased awareness of discrimination against marginalized group will be difficult to measure. As a result, the contractor project manager suggested that the business case should compare the expected improvement from conducting the campaign against how much such discrimination would have increased without the campaign to raise awareness. Is this an appropriate application of the business case practice and why? Yes, is the correct answer. Because when we're doing our business case, we always have to consider the possibility of do nothing. So we'll always have two options. The option we're doing and the do nothing. When we are looking at the reason part of our business case, we're basically stating all the reason why it is a terrible idea to do nothing. We always compare this with the option we've chosen. If we cannot find enough reason to do nothing, of course, if the benefit doesn't exceed what we're gonna get, we might still choose do nothing. Sometimes doing nothing is the best possible option. So the project manager is suggesting here that actually, if we're having difficulty deciding what the benefits are, let's consider the alternative, what if we didn't do nothing? What's gonna happen as a result? And if the situation is gonna get worse considerably, then it might justify us doing the project anyways. Since we've decided this is a yes, let's look at the two yes options. A says yes, because the business case should be used to judge whether the project is desirable, viable, achievable to support decision making. Here, this is a, a theoretical question, doesn't really answer our question. We're asking, the question we're asking is, is it okay for the project manager to suggest using the idea of do nothing to justify whether we should do the project? B says, yes, because business case should calculate the benefits as the difference between the do nothing differently and do something option. So B is our correct answer. Question 18. The project is a simple project that should be completed within six months. The contractor project manager has worked with many NGOs successfully delivering similar projects. As a result of this experience, they have suggested that the project brief and business case should be combined into one simple business case document. Is this an appropriate application of the business case practice and why? The answer is yes. This is an acceptable form of tailoring when it comes to Prince 2. So which yes is it? A says yes because the format and content of the business case should suit the size and complexity of the project. B says yes a business case should demonstrate whether your project is viable, desirable and achievable. This doesn't explain why we are asking to combine the business case and the project brief together. So A is the one answering the question. A says yes because the format and content of the business case should suit the size and complexity of the project. On a small project, the idea suggested by, uh, by the project manager is a good idea. So A is our correct answer. Now let's have a look at the organizing practice. The high level requirements gathering and implementation of the chosen option will be carried out by an external marketing agency, Charity M. Here are the three items of information to be included in the commercial management approach. Under which heading of the commercial management approach should the information be recorded? Choose only one heading. Each heading can be used once, more than once, and not at all. When facing this type of question, it might be a good idea to flip your textbook to the commercial management approach. That way you can look at all of the headings in there and better understand the definition. Here we have A is scope, B is delivery model, C is resources, D is responsibility, and E is standards. Let's look at the question. The head of publicity and social media will work with the procurement team to agree the scope of the work and terms with charity M.
What is that? These are the responsibilities that they hold. So the answer will be under responsibilities is where we'll find this. Question 20. It says procurement team will provide two experts to work alongside the head of publicity and social media during stage one to agree the scope of the work and terms with Charity M. These are the resources that we have, and therefore it will be written on the resources. Question 21. The high level requirement gathering and implementation of the chosen option will be carried out by an external marketing agency. When we're looking at this, this is our delivery model. Therefore, the answer will be B. This sort of question, when you do have it, will be a good idea to look at the appropriate management approach. Make sure you understand what we mean when we talk about scope, delivery models, resources, responsibilities, standards, and so on. Question 22. The Chief Executive Officer has informed the contractor project manager that there will be the single point of accountability for the project when developing the initial project management documentation. This is because of their track record of successful delivery in the not-for-profit sector. Is this an appropriate organizing practice and why? The answer is no. This is a terrible idea. The chief executive officer and the project manager must always be separate. The project manager cannot be the project's executive and the project executive can never be the project manager. The two roles must be different. Doers cannot be checkers. So once we know that the two roles must be different, then let's look at our potential answers. Let's start with D. D says no because the contractor project manager cannot also perform the role of project executive. Let's start with C. C says no because the contractor project manager cannot perform any other role on the project. And D says no because the contractor project manager cannot perform the role of the project executive. The contractor project manager can perform other roles on the project. So potentially there could be a project support. They could also be the uh, team manager if they have the requisite skills for it. But they cannot be both the project executive because it goes against their role. The two responsibilities must always be separated. So the answer is D. So D is your correct answer. 23. The director of campaign has decided that the contractor project manager should continue as the project manager during stage two. In addition, the director of campaign has asked the contractor project manager to perform the team manager's role for the requirements gathering work package in stage two. This is because the contractor project manager understands the not-for-profit sector in general and how to make best use of variety of media on this project. The director of campaign has agreed to employ them on a full-time basis during stage two. Is this an appropriate application of the organizing practice and why? The answer is yes, because the project manager can do other roles. There are certain roles that can be combined. For example, the project manager can be the team manager, they can be the project support. There's nothing wrong with that. But there are other roles that cannot be combined. For example, the project manager cannot be any of the project assurance or cannot hold a board role. That is because the project manager is the doer and therefore cannot also do the work and also be the one authorizing it. So once we know that this is basically being asked, the project manager being asked to do some team manager role, there's nothing wrong with that. They can perform it if they have the requisite skill to do so. And from the question, we know they have the requisite skill to do so. So, which yes is it? A says, yes, because the project management maturity of now BU is very low and the contracted project manager should advise the project team on how to use the media. 
This is not the reason why. Yes, it might be low, but we are asking him to do the T major role because he has the necessary experience. B says, yes, because the project manager has the necessary knowledge of media channel and the time to devote to the role of the team manager. If this is the case, then that answers our question. So our answer will be B. Now let's have a look at plans. Here are three actions relating to developing stage two plans. Which role from A to F should be responsible for each action? Choose only one role for each action. Each role can be used once, more than once, or not at all. Question 24. Before we go into question 24, it is important to look at all the roles that we have here and to have a, a decent idea of what their responsibilities are. The business layer, the project executive, the senior user, the senior supplier, project manager, and team manager. If we're very confident about what these people do, then we'll be able to know what activities relate to them. Question 24. Check the stage two plan to ensure that enough time has been allowed to obtain input and feedback from the user group on the high level requirement gathering and option analysis. Whose responsibility is this? This is the responsibility of the senior user. They are the one who represent the user group and they need to make sure that while they are planning, the group that is going to be giving all the feedback in terms of the project product description and the product description, enough time has been granted so that they can do their work. So this is the role of the senior user. So therefore, our answer will be C. 25 says, advise the project manager on how to prepare the stage plan to comply with the now BU requirements. We know that there is a point where the organization uh, structure and the project structure combine together. If the project manager needs to know how to comply with the now BU requirements, they need to speak with the business layer because the business layer already has that information and they're the one who will be advising the project manager on what they need to do to meet the standards. So the right answer will be A, business layer. Question number 26. Prepare the schedule for the requirements gathering work package for inputs to stage two plan. When you are looking at this particular question, we're preparing a schedule for, require, for the requirement gathering work package for input into stage two plan. So who's gonna give us that requirements, those work package input that will be our team manager. So the right answer will be team manager. Question 27. The campaign against discrimination is a critical project for now BU. As a result, it is important that the project delivers within the agreed project time tolerance. The contracted project manager has a track record of successful delivery of this type of project. Therefore, it has been decided that the entire project time tolerance should be allocated to stage three. When the new project manager will be working mostly on their own, there was an issue with the TV campaign work package during the stage, and some extra time is needed to complete the work package. The work will be completed within the stage time tolerance. According to the plan practice, which role should authorize the extra time to complete the campaign during stage three? We have four possible options here. Business, project executive, project manager, project assurance. The project uh, executive or the project board set the stage tolerance. Once the project manager has the stage tolerance, 
it is within their remit to do with it as they see fit. So when we're being asked that according to the plan practice, which role should authorize the extra time? And we also know that this authorization will not exceed the time tolerance. So therefore it is the project manager who needs to do this. So the answer would be C. Question 28. The contracted project manager is creating a project plan in stage one based on a better understanding of the requirements gathering and option analysis work in stage two. They have also obtained more detailed estimate of time and cost from external marketing agency implementing the campaign in stage three. Is this an appropriate application of the plan practice? Let's break it down. We are in stage one at the moment and we're creating our project plan. At that point in time, the project plan, don't forget, covers everything that's gonna happen from the first CS all the way to the last CP. At that point, we need to know how many stages we're gonna have and what the output of those stages are going to be. So it is appropriate that the project manager while creating that project plan that will span stage two and stage three should at least speak to the people with the understanding, with the skills to do the work. And if they were to provide them with estimate, it will be good to, to input this estimate in what they're doing. So the answer is yes. But let's have a look at which yes it is. A says yes, because the project manager should identify the work package that the external marketing agency will be delivering in stage three to implement the campaign. This is not correct because we don't start looking at the work packages until we reach the stage where we're planning for stage three. Currently we're in stage one, so we will not be planning work package for stage three. When we get to stage two and we're writing our next stage plan, we can start to collect draft work packages and start looking at how we're gonna do that for stage three. So A is incorrect. B says yes, because the project manager should create a project plan to include more detailed cost and time estimate to ensure continued business justification. Yes, we want to use the information that we get from our project plan to update our business case. Within our business case, we do have headings for costs and time scale, and the information from our project plan will be very useful in updating that information and helping with the continued business justification. So the answer is B. During stage one, the contractor project manager is preparing the project plan. In order to do this, the contractor project manager is working with the director of campaign and the head of publicity and social media to understand more about the option analysis product, what needs to be produced, who will approve it, and the associated quality specification. Is this an appropriate application of the plan practice and why? The answer is yes. We need to note all this information when we're doing our product-based planning technique. Let's have a look at which option it is. B says yes, because the project manager should define the option analysis product as a major product to be delivered by the project. A says yes, because the project manager should produce the product description for the anal option analysis to be able to estimate realistic time cost in the project plan. In order for us to have a realistic product, when we're doing our product-based planning technique, we start with the major product itself. We use our product breakdown structure to break it into little pieces. But in order to get to the specificity of it, we need to write product description. Writing the product description allows us to put quality criteria or quality specification in there, and for us to input that into work packages that will be able to produce more accurate and realistic time and cost estimate. So our answer will be A for this one. Quality. Here are three items of information relating to the leaflet that will be issued to the police officer attending the awareness workshop. Which management product A to E should they be recorded in? Choose only one option. Each option can be used once more than once or not at all. 30. 
The leaflets were reviewed by the director of campaign on the planned date and were approved for use at the workshop. Under which heading are we going to put this? We have the product description, product register, project product description, quality register, quality management approach. This will go into our quality register because all activity related to quality review will be recorded in there. Because this has stated that this has been reviewed by the director on the plan date and the things were approved, it will go into our quality register. Quality register is where we go to look at what has happened to a product, whether the quality review team came, whether it passed, whether a concession was granted, we will see that in our quality register. Question 31. Now BU contact details and those of other supporting organisation must be included in the leaflet. The details must be 100% accurate for email address, postal address, social media platforms and phone number. Where would we find this information? When we are looking at where this information is going to be, this sounds like something they need to comply with in order for the product to be acceptable. In order for this to be the case, we will find this information in our product description. The product description will, co will consist of the quality specification and any other tolerances and stuff that we need to have within the product itself. So the answer will be A. Question 32. All published material, including leaflet, must conform to the copyright and data protection legislation. This kind of overarching rule that the organization must comply with for the project to be acceptable will be recorded in your quality management approach. Things like confirmation with GDPR and all those stuff will be in there. So the answer is E. Question 33. The following entry has been recorded as one of the user's quality expectation documented in the project product description for the Campaign Against Discrimination project. The delivered multi-channel campaign will lead to improved brand recognition, resulting in increased donation and financial aid from partners. Is recording this statement as a user quality expectation an appropriate application of the quality practice and why? The answer is no. And let's start with why that is. What is our user quality expectation? User quality expectation tells us generally what the customer wants from the product. It is not about the benefit, but this allows us to then be able to have acceptance criteria that can be tied to it. So we use the acceptance criteria to make sure that the product that we have as a project product description is actually what the customer wants. So when we're trying to define our project product description, we start with things like what is the user customer or the user quality expectation. So I want it to be this, I want the project to do, to do this for me, I want the project to do that for me, then we attach acceptance criteria to it. But we do not state any benefit in the project product description. This is strictly focus on product. So therefore the answer is no, but which no is it? It says no because the improved brand recognition is an output delivered by the campaign, not a user quality expectation. This is not an output. This is more of an outcome. So the outcome that will be measured in benefits. So C is not our answer because it is not an output. D says no because increased donation and financial aid are benefits resulting from outcome, not a user quality expectation. And D is correct. Question number 34. The director of campaign is concerned whether the trial will give the required confidence that the campaign would meet their quality specification. As a result, the project quality control measures needs to be assessed. The assessment will review whether 
when they campaign at trial with a representative from the support group, they will meet their quality specification. The project board has decided that it will manage this assessment. Is this an appropriate application of quality practice and why? A says yes, because quality assurance should be performed by the project board. This is not correct. Quality assurance, remember, is external to the project. They have no responsibility to the project board. B says yes, because the project assurance should be a project board responsibility or delegated to someone to perform on their behalf. But what we're talking about here is a quality assurance role. So therefore, B doesn't work as well. So we're down to our no. C says no because the project assurance should be a responsibility of the project management team as a whole. No, this is incorrect. The project assurance is a separate role that is responsible to the project board. And this says no because the quality assurance should be managed independently from the project team. D is correct. Quality assurance is always independent of the project team and they are responsible to either the business or their own organization that sent them, but they have no particular loyalty to the project. So D is our right answer. Risk. The following risk has been recorded in the risk register. As now BU is a new NGO, there is a risk that they may not be fully aware of the way social media can be used effectively, resulting in poor publicity and reduced coverage nationally and worldwide. Initially, in response to this risk, a social media specialist has been hired at a significant cost to the project. Further responses will be identified once the social media specialist complete review of the social media usage. Here are three items of information to be included in the risk register. Under which heading of the risk register A to E should the information be recorded? Choose only one heading for each item of information. Each heading can be used once, more than once, or not at all. Question 35. The social media specialist is preparing new standards processes relating to the social media usage. This is somebody actually doing the work. So in your risk register, if you're recording this, this will be the risk action owner. This is because they're actually doing the work and the answer will be E. Remember when you're dealing with risk, we use the risk management procedure to record things in our register. First of all, we identify the risk and we record it in our risk register. We identify the risk by looking at the cause event effect. Once we record that, then we need to assess the risk and we assess the risk by looking at the likelihood, impact, and proximity, and we record that in our register as well. Then we need to plan for the risk and look at our risk responses. Once we've chosen our risk responses, we write that in our register as well. Now, finally, we need to implement the risk. In order to implement the risk, we need to choose someone who's actually going to do the work and somebody who's going to provide the resources for it. The person who does the work is the risk action owner and the person who provides the resources is the risk owner. In this situation, 35 says the social media specialist is preparing new standards processes relating to social media usage. This is the risk action owner. This is the one who is implementing our risk response to this particular risk. So answer will be E. Question 36 says, a decision has been made to introduce a new standard process relating to social media usage. So, we're going to look at what is that going to be. That is our risk response. So we've made a decision to introduce a new standard relating to social, standard, uh, social media usage. So that's our risk response. That's how we've decided to deal with this risk. Question 37 says, without introduction of any standards relating to social media usage, now BU is likely to incur significant legal costs.
This is the impact when we analyze what's going to happen if we don't actually do anything about this. So the impact is 37. So that will be B. Question 38. The following entry has been recorded in the risk register. Risk description. Due to the low level of recognition of the now BU brand, increasing the brand recognition could help potential donor to recognize the work that now BU does, increasing the number of amount of donation. Is this an appropriate application of the risk practice and why? Let's have a look at that. The following entry has been recorded in the risk register. The risk description is as follows. Due to the low level of recognition in the now BU brand, increasing the brand recognition could help potential donor to recognize the work of now BU, increasing the number of the amount of donation. Is this appropriate? The answer is yes. Which yes is it? Let's have a look at it. B says yes, because the risk register should describe the positive exposure of the project to achieve the objective of the increasing donation. And A says yes, because the risk register should describe the risk cause, the opportunity that may arise and the effect it will have on the achievement of the objective. So A is our correct answer. Because over there, we see the cause, event and effect. Question 39. The following entry has been recorded in the risk register. The risk description. Due to low level of recognition of the now BU brand, increasing the brand recognition could help potential donor to recognize the work that now BU does, increasing the number of amount of donation. The response is as follows. Exploit the opportunity. Employ an external brand specialist to maximize the brand recognition during a campaign. Is this an appropriate application of the risk practice and why? What we've done here is not fully exploit. To exploit is to take full advantage of it, making sure everything is built around this. However, by doing this, we have enhanced our situation, making sure we're likely to get the actual uh, reward that we're aiming for. So once we eliminate the yes, let's look at the no. C says no because the risk response should be recorded as enhanced rather than exploit. And D says no because the increase in donation should happen after the project is closed. It is C because what the option we've chosen is enhance, not exploit. Exploit will mean subordinating everything to it and making sure this becomes a full reality. So our answer is C. Issue. In one of the local areas where a large number of refugees are living, there's been a significant increase in the number of reports to police about discrimination against refugees. However, the police liaison officer believes that even more incidents are happening but are not reported. As a result, the police liaison officer has asked whether the project team could add a number of workshops with local residents to stage three. The purpose of the workshop would be to increase the understanding of this type of discrimination and how to identify it. Here are three actions being taken in response to this request to add workshop to the project scope. Which role, A to E, should be responsible for carrying them out? Choose only one role for each action. Each role can be used once, more than once, or not at all. Here we have all the roles that we could possibly use for this particular question. We have project manager, project executive, senior user, and project support and team manager. When answering this type of question, remember the issue management technique. You're basically going through each stage trying to determine who will be responsible for what. You're going through in your mind the capture, the assess, the recommend, the determine, and of course, or the decide, and then the implement. So 40 says, if approved, identify the agenda, timetable, and venue for the workshop.
If we take this issue all the way through issue uh, management technique, and we now find that we'll now get to the point where we need to implement. What role is going to implement this? The role that is going to find the timetable, agenda, the workshop, that sounds like a work for the delivery team. And that will be team manager. So the answer will be E, team manager. Question 41. Record the request for workshop from the police liaison officer. On this particular occasion, we're going to have the project support. The project support is there to deal with any administrative work that we might have. So the answer will be D. Question 42. Discuss with the chair of the user group and the head of publicity and social media how this workshop might help local residents become more aware of the type of discrimination against the refugees and how to identify it. If we're discussing this with the chair and the user group, this is the project manager and the project manager should take on this role. So our answer will be A. Question 43. The following entry has been recorded as a request for change in the issue register of the Campaign Against Discrimination project. Discrimination against marginalized group, in particular, the homeless and refugees is growing at a concerning rate. Is this an appropriate application of the issue practice and why? The answer for this is no, because this is not a request for change. A request for change is when we decide to change an agreed baseline. This sounds like a problem or concern. So therefore, the answer is no, this is not a request for change. This is merely stating a concern. C says no, because this is a concern for the whole of Nobu, not a request for change the baseline of the campaign against discrimination. This is our answer. But let's look at what, C, what D says. D says no, because the impact this could have on the achievement of the project objective is uncertain. That's not the question that has been asked of us. We want to know whether they've recorded this correctly, and they haven't. They've confused concerns with a request for change. So our answer will be C. Question 44. The following entry has been recorded in the issue register of the Campaign Against Discrimination project. A political lobby group dedicated to reducing police funding has offered to provide a significant portion of the money required for the Campaign Against Discrimination project. However, the police liaison officer has advised that all police forces will withdraw their support from this and all future NOBU projects, if the funding is accepted. This is because accepting the funding will send a negative message about how NOBU perceives the police force. The project manager has assessed the issue in consultation with the director of campaign. The project manager has recommended that the project board should escalate the matter to the chief executive officer and the board of trustees to consider the wider implication of this proposed funding. Is this an appropriate application of the issue practice and why? Yes, the project manager has done the right thing because this seems like a very major thing that, just, that doesn't just affect the project itself but the entire organization. In such circumstances, it will be advisable that even the business layer should be made aware of this so that the actions of the project does not jeopardize future of the organization. Let's look at our yes. A says yes because the project manager should consult with others when identifying the best way to resolve an issue. This is more than just that. B says yes because the project board should escalate to the now BU chief executive as this issue has wider implication for the organization. It is the scale of the issue that, needs, that means the board simply needs to escalate this. So our answer is B. Progress. Here are three items of information relating to the progress practice. Which management product should they be recorded in? Choose only one option. Each option can be used once, 
Modern ones or not at all? Question 45. At the end of stage three, the director of campaign stated that the implementation of the chosen option had gone well. But the marketing agency advised that the TV campaign would have been more successful if it had been run at the same time as the social media campaign. Where would this be recorded? First of all, let's look at the options. A says exception report. Exception report is written when we break a tolerance. Daily log. We use daily log to basically uh, record informal issues. Highlight report. We just use this to inform the board of what is going on within the project. Checkpoint report is written by the team manager to the project manager. An end project report is written at the end of the project. We know here that we are in the end of stage three, and stage three is our final stage. And in our final stage, we're gonna have the closing project process. One of the activities that will take place in the closing project process is to write your end project report, because that's the end of the project. Based on what the director of campaign is telling us, we know that we are at the end of the project, therefore, this will happen in the end project report. So the answer is E. Question 46. The time tolerance for stage two is plus one week. The option analysis has been delayed and the end of the stage will be delayed by two weeks. The project manager has suggested that the stage end should be delayed by two weeks to ensure that the options are fully considered before implementing the chosen option in stage three. In what place are we going to record this? We need to be aware of what tolerances are. We know that we have a one week tolerance, but now the stage will be delayed by two weeks. So therefore there's been a breach of tolerance. As a result, we need to write the exception report to inform the project board of this. So the answer will be A, exception report. Question 47, during stage two, the team manager for the option analysis confirmed that the TV advertising will be affordable after all, despite having been worried earlier in the stage that this might be too expensive. In what document would we find this? This is going to be in your checkpoint report, because the checkpoint report is used to communicate from the team manager to the project manager and the team manager here is communicating to the project manager therefore it will be in your checkpoint report question 48 a graduate trainee has just been appointed as the project manager from stage 3 onwards they have suggested that the time driven controls are not needed because the project is moving into the final stage where the chosen option is implemented is this an appropriate application of the progress practice and why? For this particular part of the question, we need to consider whether this is appropriate or not. The fact is, this is not appropriate. As a project manager, the time-driven report you need to write is your highlight report. And this allows the board to have a kind of an up-to-date of what is going on within the project at an agreed interval. It is not the right of the project manager to jettison this. The board still needs to know what is going on within the project. So this is a no. C says no because the project manager should update the project board on the stage progress and status at the agreed interval during stage three. This is correct. So our answer will be C. But let's have a look at D. D says no because the project manager should report to the project board if the stage three tolerance are forecast to be exceeded. This is true, but this is not the question. We have not said that any tolerance is forecast to be exceeded, simply that the project manager has decided that they no longer need to write an ILA report to the board, and this is not a decision they can make. So, answer remains C. Question 49. The project is in stage one, and the project manager has recorded the following entry in the daily log. 
The police liaison officer has been, has been busy every time I've requested a meeting with them. I need to discuss with the director of campaign why the police liaison officer may be reluctant to engage with me about this project. Is this an appropriate application of the program practice and why? First of all, yes, this is an appropriate application of the progress practice. Because, let's have a look at A, it says yes because this matter should be recorded in a daily log so that it can be handled in a discreet manner. This appears to be what the project manager wants to do, to deal with this in a discreet manner as opposed to going through the official issue and change control uh, procedure. Because if they choose to treat this as a formal issue, they will have to write in the issue register Everybody else will have a view of what is going on, and this probably will not help with the police liaison uh, in the future. And this probably will not help when dealing with the police liaison officer in the future. So our answer will be A. Question 50. The project is in starting up a project process. The contractor project manager has suggested the use of focus group in stage 2 to get early feedback on potential options. The contractor project manager met with a fundraising administrator who has used focus group before on campaigns to discuss how they were used in now BU. During which activities should this take place? Now, let's be mindful that we're in starting up a project process. And what the project manager is looking at is previous lessons. So basically, this has been done before. I want to find out how they were used so that we can see how we can implement it going forward. So our answer will be assess previous lessons. Question 51. The project is in the starting up a project process. The contractor project manager has suggested that the members of the networking and support group should be invited to participate in focus group to test which media will work best in increasing the awareness of the discrimination. The head of the fundraising has advised that the focus group have been used before by now BU and the fundraising administrator was heavily involved in their use. As a result, the contractor project manager organized a meeting with them to discuss how they were used before which practice is being applied by the starting up a project process. We're still in starting up a project process at this point. And what we're trying to figure out is how to progress through the project. So we're assessing previous lessons. So this will be B, progress. Question 52. The contractor project manager has produced a project brief, including the outline business case, project product description, project approach, and role description. The project board has received this, along with a request to authorize initiation. The contractor project manager is now waiting for the appointment of the internal project manager before the planning the initiation stage. Is this an appropriate application of status of project process? The answer is no. Before we can request to initiate a project, the project board needs to have two documents to have a look at. The project brief, which, which documents the current justification for the project, and the initiation stage plan, which tells them what the future of the project is likely to be. They need the initiation stage plan in order to be able to make a justification for going into to. They need the initiation stage plan in order to understand how much initiation will cost and how long it will take. So now that we say no, let's have a look at it. C says no because the internal project manager should be responsible for issuing the project initiation requests. There's no need for this. The contractor project manager can make a request to initiate a project if they have all the necessary documentation available. D says no, because the project board should review the initiation stage plan to understand the time and resources required to initiate a project. So it is D, 
because the project board is missing a document that will allow them to understand the time and resources needed to initiate a project and to determine whether this is worth it. So our answer is D. Question 53. The project is intended to increase awareness of discrimination against marginalized groups. The project is now at the end of stage three and the project board is about to authorize project closure. In order to do this, the project assurance needs to check how this increase in awareness of discrimination will be measured after the multi-channel campaign has been delivered. Which practice has been applied by the director and project process when the project assurance performed this check? A is risk, B is progress, C is business case, and D is quality. In the business case, we state all our benefits, what we're going to get out of it. Another aspect of the business case is the benefit management approach. And this is what they're going to be checking. So the project assurance needs to check how the increase in awareness of discrimination will be measured after the multi-channel campaign has been delivered. They will find this information in the benefit management approach, which is part of the business case practice. So our answer will be business case. Question 54. The chosen campaign option has been implemented. One of its objectives was to increase awareness amongst police officers of discrimination against marginalized groups. The police liaison officer is going to work with local police forces to measure whether the delivered campaign has successfully increased awareness and whether there's been any unplanned consequences, such as the reduction arrest of individuals in this group. During which activity of the director and project process should this measure be approved? We have authorized initiation, authorized the project, authorized a stage or exception, and authorize a project closure. At this point in time, we know that the police liaison are going to check whether we've been successful or not. So we're planning for that. So therefore, we're in authorized project closure because we've reached the point where we can start gathering the benefits or we can start preparing for the benefits. So therefore, it will be authorized project closure. Remember that authorized initiation is basically granted to allow you to operate in the initiation stage where you plan the project, you agree tailoring, and all those things. Authorize the project allows you to go into your first control in the stage to start the project. Authorize a stage or exception is to authorize another next stage or an exception plan. It is only when we're authorizing project closure that we're at the end and we start to basically close everything, all the registers and log, and we start planning for life in the benefit management approach. So therefore, authorize project closure. Question 55. The project is in stage two and the team manager has forecast that the requirements gathering work package will exceed its time and cost tolerance. However, the stage two will still be within the cost and time tolerances. The project manager has issued exception reports to request direction from the project executive because the requirements are critical to carrying out the option analysis later in the stage. Is this an appropriate application of the give ongoing direction activities? The answer is no. And why do we say no? It is because the project manager doesn't need to write an exception report. An exception report only needs to happen when the project manager is about to break a stage tolerance. But the project manager clearly states that even though those two work packages will, be, will exceed their cost and time tolerance, the stage tolerance still remains within its boundaries. So it's okay for the work package tolerance to be exceeded as long as it has tolerance in its stage. Therefore, it doesn't need to inform the board about the break in this tolerance. So therefore, our answer is no. Let's have a look at our no option. C says no because the project manager should also consult with senior user and senior supplier when asking for advice. And D says no because the project manager should request informal advice without the need to use exception report. 
D is the one answering the question because the project manager should have been able to request informal advice about the work packages going out of top work package tolerance without needing an exception report because an exceptional activity has not occurred within the stage. So our answer will be D. Question 56. The project is in the initiating project process. The contracted project manager has requested a meeting with the project board. At the meeting, they will explain how the campaign will raise awareness of discrimination against marginalized group and reinforce now BU brand recognition and explain what happened during project initiation. During which activity of initiating a project process should this be done? We have agreed tailoring. A, agreed tailoring happens at the beginning of our initiation stage, at the beginning of initiating a project process, where we're just trying to understand how we're going to go about the project. We have not yet even completed the document that will go into the project initiation document at that point. Agree management approaches. It is the management approaches that will actually go into our project initiation document. So at this point, we still haven't, we're not ready to explain what happened in project initiation yet. Establish project control, that is still something that will happen while we're gathering our project initiation document. Remember, we want to explain what happened during project initiation. So it means we've reached the end of initiation itself. Request project authorization is the last thing we'll do, we will do in initiation stage once we've got our project initiation document, our next stage plan will basically tell the board, okay, we've got everything for you, can you please authorize a project? So this activity that they're discussing here will happen in request project authorization. So the answer will be D. Question 57. The project is in the initiation stage. The project manager organized a workshop with the head of publicity and social media, the police liaison and the director of campaign and other key stakeholders. The purpose of the workshop was to understand more about the delivered multimedia campaign, in particular, what will make the campaign acceptable to the attendees and how, we will, and how it, this will be achieved. What pra which practice is being applied by the initiating project process? We have several themes here, plan, issues, organizing, business case. Well, let's start with the business case. This is not about any justification of the project. So we can remove that. Organizing, we're not describing people's role here. Now, issues, this is not an issue. The reality is we're talking about plan. And why we want these people present is so that we can do a product-based planning technique. These people will help us with the break, product breakdown structure, agreeing what goes into product description, and helping us understand the product flow diagram. So therefore, this activity is taking place as part of the activity in the initiating the project process. So our answer will be A. Question 58. The project is in the initiating a project process. It will be important for the Campaign Against Discrimination project to align communication messages delivered by different channels of TV, press, and social network to achieve maximum impact. The effectiveness of each message and how it differs by channel will also need to be measured. In which activity of the initiating project process should a project manager ensure that these requirements are addressed and why? We have two possible options here. Request project authorization and assemble project initiation documents. We will request project authorization when we've finished all the work. So we want to address this before we actually request project authorization. Because at that point, it's too late to address anything. Everything has been done. Everything has already been checked. Everything is gone. So we know that it's going to fall into assemble the project initiation document. The assembled project initiation document C says because the requirements recorded in the project initiation document should be baseline and placed under change control. 
Yes, that is true, but that's not quite answering our question. D says, assemble project initiation documentation because the project manager should carry out a cross-check of the messages, channel, and the benefit review to ensure that they work together. So our answer will be D. Question 59. In the communication management approach, the project board requested a written summary to be available every Monday morning of progress made with the requirement gathering and option analysis. The project is in a controlling the stage process in stage two. In the controlling the stage process, which role should be responsible for producing this written summary? We have four possible options here, but the thing we need to ask ourselves is, who is working within the control the stage process? And that is the project manager. So the project manager is responsible for producing this report, which is your highlight report. So answer is A. Question 60. The project is in stage three. The marketing agency team manager has advised that they will not be able to deliver the agreed number of TV advertising campaign within the agreed time scale and budget. As a result, the project board has consulted and agreed that the marketing agency should deliver fewer advertisements. The team manager has been advised of this decision. In the controlling the stage process, which role should be informed about this decision? You have the business, the project executive, the project assurance, and of course, the project support. The business is already out of the project. We don't need to inform them of these low level uh, decisions. The project assurance already knows because they're part of the project board. And the project executive already knows as this has already been escalated to the project board. It is the project support who needs to know this information so that it can record what has happened. So the answer will be D. Question 61. During the control and stage process in stage three, the project manager visited the team working on the TV campaign work package to informally review progress. They're currently filming the campaign and the work is going well, but it is very busy and the deadline is very tight. As a result, the project manager agreed with the team manager that the checkpoint report could be issued after filming finishes to formally report progress a couple of days later than scheduled. The project manager then made a note of the discussion in the project log. Is this an appropriate application of the Evaluate Work Package status activity and why? Is this an appropriate application of the Evaluate Work Package status activity and why? Yes, it is. And it is yes because the project manager should have informal conversation with team manager to review progress and understand issues they're facing. Since the project manager has had a talk with the team manager and is basically being kept aware of what is going on, it is okay for him to make that particular decision. So the answer is B. Question 62. The project is at the beginning of stage two. The project manager has agreed with the team manager for the high level requirements gathering that the campaign must include TV and social media networks. However, the press campaigns are not as critical and are a should have requirements. During which activity of managing product delivery should this be agreed? We look at the activities we have here, accept work packages, execute work packages, evaluate work packages, and notify work package completion. Basically, this is the initial agreement between the project manager and the team manager. So you don't want to actually start any work before you agree what must be, what must be delivered. So we are not in execute work package because execute work package is after you have accepted work package. And we're not at evaluate work packages. The answer will be A, accept work package. The idea is for both the project manager and the team manager to agree what needs to be delivered. So if something is a should have requirement, this will be agreed in advance before the team manager accepts the work packages. So your answer will be A. Question 63. The project is in the managing product delivery process in stage two. 
Work on the high-level requirements gathering is underway. The team manager has advised the project manager that the work is progressing to plan and should be completed on time and to quality for TV, press and social networks. Which practice is being applied by the managing product delivery process? The reality is the, project, the team manager is informing the project manager about the progress. So this will be the progress team because that's what deals with both the event-driven controls as well as the time-driven controls. So if the team manager is informing the project manager either through a checkpoint report or just raising an issue, that's a progress. So the answer is D. Question 64. The project is in stage two and the option analysis work package is on the way. As work progresses, a wide range of options have been identified to deliver the campaign. The newly appointed project manager is unable to give guidance on which option to explore, as advice from the wider business is needed, including that of the director of campaign. The team manager for this option analysis work package has therefore asked the project board for regular advice to ensure the option analyzed will meet the project objectives. Is this action appropriate for the execute work package activity and why? The answer is no. There is no circumstance where the team manager should be talking to the project board. This is going beyond what should happen. The team manager should report to the project manager. So C says, no, because the option analysis team manager should report regularly on work package progress to the project manager. D says, no, because the project manager should advise the option analysis team manager on how to proceed after consulting with the project board. Our answer is D. It is up to the project manager to basically verify what needs to be delivered so that it can actually create a work package that will allow them to continue. So the team manager should not go above a station. Speak to the project manager about your concern, let the project manager handle it with the project board, and then they will authorize the work package on what you need to deliver. So the answer is D. Question 65. The multi-channel campaign has been delivered and the project is in the closing project process. The project budget has been increased twice during the course of the project after approval by the project board of trustees. The project manager is now analyzing spend against the budget to identify how much of this overspend was a result of misestimation, approved changes, and management of risk. This information will be used when estimating budget for the future campaigns. In the closer project process, which role should be accountable for this action? The word accountable is quite important. And while the project manager is responsible for this, the accountable for this role is the project executive. If you're having any difficulty with this, please go through your process map and look at the RACI table. So your project executive is the person who's accountable for this action. So the answer is B. Question 66. The Campaign Against Discrimination project has delivered a multi-channel campaign. The project is in the closing project process in the final stage. The project team needs to review whether the campaign has delivered against expected time, cost, scope, and quality as defined in the project initiation documentation at the end of stage one. In the control and stage process, which role should be accountable for this action? Again, similar stuff. We're talking about accountable here, and the person accountable for this activity is going to be the project executive. If you have any, uh, if, again, for this type of question, just have a look at your RACI table. So our answer will be B. Question 67. During stage two, a national TV channel ran a series of programs on the increasing discrimination against the homeless and refugees. 
This TV series was unconnected to the work being carried out by Now Be You. As a result of this TV series, the project manager reviewed the impacts that the campaign against discrimination was forecast to have. It was identified that there would be a similar increase in awareness of discrimination, but the increase in Now Be You brand recognition was forecast to be greater than originally expected. In which activity should this be recorded during a managing a stage boundary and why? We're choosing between prepare exception plan and updating our business case. We are not going to choose prepare exception plan because this is not an exception case. We've basically found out a new potential benefit. So let's look at our update business case and let's look at C. Update the business case because the benefit management approach should reflect the revised benefit forecast. D says update the business case because the project board should understand the risk to achieving the forecast benefits. This is not a risk, so it will be C. We will need to update our benefit management approach to show a greater potential benefit than initially uh, expected. So our answer is C. Question 68. The project is in stage three. The implementation of the chosen option is going to take longer than planned, meaning that the stage will exceed its time tolerance. The project board has asked the project manager to provide a summary of what work has been completed to implement the chosen option and what remains to be done before approving the exception plan already submitted. Which practice has been applied by the managing stage boundary process when the project manager produces this summary? So we have organizing, we have progress, we have issues, we have quality. This is to do with progress. So in order to go forward, we need to know what has been done so far. So our answer will be progress. Question 69. The project is in the final stage. The project manager has reported to the project board that the implementation of the chosen option is going to take longer than planned and the stage will exceed its time tolerance. The project board has asked the project manager to, replay, to replan the remainder of the stage. In addition, the project board will like a summary of how much of the multi-channel campaign has been implemented and what is left to be completed. During which activity of the manager stage boundary process should the project manager produce this summary? We have the prepare an exception plan. We have the evaluate the stage. We have request the next stage and we have update the project plan. Basically, what the board wants to know is what has gone on in your stage so far? What have you delivered? What is left to be delivered? So the project manager will be evaluating the stage. So our answer will be B. Question 70. During the final stage, a consumer research company has been contracted to assess whether the public has a higher awareness of discrimination against marginalized groups and the work carried out by the Now BU as a result of the campaign. The multi-channel campaign has now been delivered and the project is in a closing project process. The senior user has been given responsibility for ensuring that these assessments are planned appropriately by the research company. Is this an appropriate application of the confirmed project acceptance activity and why. The answer for this is yes. And let's have a look at the two yeses. A says yes because the senior user as the customer should take ownership of the delivered multi-channel campaign after the project has been closed. And B says yes because the project manager should inform senior user in checking the planned post-project benefit review if required. It will be B because the senior user needs to make sure that the benefits are actually accrued and, and checked once the project goes live. So our answer is B. So B is answering the question.
Thank you very much for sticking with us throughout the entire questions. Hopefully by going through the process, you have a better understanding of why the answer is what the answer is, and you're able to attempt the question again with greater confidence. We hope you're able to now go and complete your actual exam once you feel that you're ready.